to Matt once again what about to another video there's another paid request this time for Devin thank you so much for that and for those that drew some requests in pretty much any type of videos or topics commentaries rankings lists randomness out of the blueness pretty much anything feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my patreon both links are down below in the info box and this is for a film called guns akimbo that came out a few years ago that got a little fanfare. A lot of people disliked the film, but I got kicked out of it. I rather enjoyed it. It seems like the kind of movie Taylor made for me because it's trying to have that crank, crank to energetic video game movie aesthetic and just balls to the wall, that same vibe. It's over the top, it's not realistic in the slightest, but just, I found it rather fun. Uh, the idea of the film is, it's in a future where live streaming death matches are real between criminals and psychopaths and people broadcast it. Which is, I mean, similar to The Running Man, things of that nature. So, Daniel Radcliffe from Harry Potter... Which I found interesting that he would really try to take different unique roles. Like he was in this film called Horns. Uh, this movie. To try to get as far away from Harry Potter as possible. But I mean it does create some variety of the type of roles he tries to pick up. And I, I rather liked him in this role. Where he works for this company. They're doing like this shitty phone game type of thing. And he trolls the trolls. He gets on his computer and all these asshole trolls, he trolls them. And it's very, this movie's very video game inspired. I mean, there's a point early on he gets bumped and rings pop out of him as if he was Sonic. When you play Sonic the Hedgehog, you get hit and the rings pop out. That happens. And when I said this film seems tailor-made for me, like, in his apartment... He's got posters of Ramble for Split Part 2 and Commando. There's a bit where an action scene happens in his apartment. And he turns to the TV and the TV's playing Hard Target. Samara Weaving uh, is an actress. She plays this character named Nix who is part of the game. And she's been tasked to find this guy, chase him and, and kill him. Until ultimately they team up. Because what Daniel Radcliffe does is. He's seen these death matches. Thinks they're horrible. They're terrible. What the fuck are people. Mal Major malfunction. He trolls them. But then one of the administrators find out where he's at. They go to his apartment. They knock him out. And when he wakes up he has these guns. Bolted into his hands. Literally bolted into his hands. So he can't take them off. He can't do anything about them. And so what do you do when these guns are bolted to your hands? So he, he can't really pick up anything. He can't really do anything. And then you're forced to be part of this game live streamed. And he's pretty much running around trying to get away from this next character. I didn't play by Samara Weaving. Uh, yeah, plot wise, there's a there are dumb moments. There are times where you just go... Dude, you have a gun, you try and do the 911, before anything happens, you just press 911, lay down on the ground, and then they'll see your... There's times I... People could clearly see the guns are bolted to his hands, if you have eyes. But there's a point that the cops have the guns on him, he just did fly on the ground. As I look at my hands, look at my hands, I didn't have anyone had common sense. Same with his girlfriend. And even later on, well, it's not his girlfriend, his potential, or ex-girlfriend, I should say, his ex-girlfriend. And you know, she immediately runs out before he could explain, and then later on the phone, he's like, yeah, I tried to explain, these things are bolted to me. It seemed like, as crazy of a situation as it was, again, if people actually looked, you could clearly see they're bolted to his hands, he's not doing this on purpose. Uh, or like the cop could just shot him in the knee. 
But despite certain lo lo logical issues, it was just fun. I thought it was a fun, entertaining movie. It's a lot of style. The, do the humor doesn't always work. Like when he... He needs to take a piss. He's trying to do it with these guns bolted to him. And I didn't I didn't need to see his dick. Just saying didn't need to see his dick. But yeah, it's meant to be a humor scene. Not because of his dick, but because he's trying to piss and eh, I mean I mean whatever. The other humor I didn't mind more I don't know if I call it humor, but dialogue pieces where they compare like an action film to real life. Like when he shoots a gun, but when he shoots the gun it really hurts his ears and the realization just how loud guns are in real life. Or when he kills a bad guy and he goes, you know what? It's not she just gets horny and a raging boner for me. She actually has PTSD because I just smacked this guy in the head multiple times with a pistol whipped him. So, yeah, she's a bit freaked out. My show teaser how that portion would happen in real life compared to what it might be in a movie. I thought that was a bit clever. And, you know, Dan, Daniel Radcliffe's on the run. And uh, I liked Samara Weaving. She, at times, gets coked up or does drugs. And when she does, it's like a superpower for her. And she just goes to town on other bad guys before going up to Daniel Radcliffe. And you have these 80s remix of songs like Ballroom Blitz and You Spin Me Right Round. Baby, right round, let the let retro player. And throughout the film, Daniel Radcliffe grows a pair, becomes a bit more manly, even stands up to his boss. You fucked you, and fucked you job, and fucked that, it was, there's a mascot for the phone, fucked that fucking chipmunk, and someone goes, it's a squirrel. And it's like, whatever, just, just stop being a dick. <laughs> I like that. Again, I think Daniel Radcliffe, he's a decent performer, decent actor. Uh, it was nice to see him play something a little bit different here. Uh, I never thought I would see him in this type of action film, but I thought they handled that rather well. And it's Samara Weaving, she's definitely enjoying her role. Uh, okay, there's a bit where she gets her finger cut off. Or blown off, I should say. And then when he's, when she talked to Daniel Radcliffe, he says something, and she does this. And then Daniel looks at her hand and goes, what does that mean? Shit! And then she picks up her middle finger that's blown off, and she puts it there. Well, I, I mean, that did make me laugh. And it's fairly violent. Even the bad guy I didn't mind. It's a, it's a tattooed heavy bad guy. I forget the actor's name. But at least he's playing it with a certain sense of energy. And he's having fun with the role. Like someone disagrees with him. He chokes him out. Get the phone. Get the cell phone. Wanting to film any and all types of violence. Uh, yeah, At least he's having fun. And. There's a lot of times a villain comes off as bland or just generic or just boring. I wouldn't call him a great villain, but again, at least he's having fun. And again, at least he's bringing a bit of energy to it. Um, yeah, I thought the action scenes, for a director that hasn't done a whole lot of stuff, I thought they were handled fairly well yes the camera gets a bit busy but I could still see and understand what was going on and it, I didn't view it as shaky cam I viewed it as energy fueled I didn't try and it's him trying to do a live action video game that's really what it is and in this case I enjoyed it I don't always care for that and I think that's maybe that's why this film has a bit of a split opinion. But I'm the guy that I didn't care for. What was oh, I forgot the name of it. 
Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. A lot of people love that. I didn't because I just did not like the lead character. I thought he was an unlikable sleazebag, in my opinion. And whether that's the point, I think that's a piss point, piss poor point to have. This, at least I liked the lead character a bit more. I felt sorry for him. Granted, you still shouldn't troll the trolls, but I can understand that sentiment. But... Yeah, I still liked him more than Scott Pilgrim. And it still had that idea of video game style from time to time. Also, yeah, I liked the... It was a colorful film. There were times where they're outside and there's like a red hue and... Not quite neon, but close. Like I said, I thought the director definitely put a lot of... I team mentioned style, but... 80s vibe to it. But th this one I enjoyed more compared to others. A lot of times the 80... I thought the references here were actually... I did kind of tailor-made for me. I mean, at the very end... You have Never Surrender, the song from Tip Boxer. During a pivotal scene with him versus a villain. Never surrender, never say die. You've got the heart of a hero. Never surrender... And that was just satisfying. It was satisfying the first time I saw it. And here, it goes by a quick pace. It's not boring. The acting, I thought, all around was fine. Or good. I see the action scenes, the shootout sequences were filmed well enough. I understood what was going on. It, it is R-rated. And... The other certain bits, like... this car chase where she Samara Weaving is in a motorcycle gets on top of his car and is revving the wheel trying to burn take his face off with the wheel of the motorcycle and then there's a crash and a slow mo and he goes through oh shit oh dude like that made me laugh so I found it an entertaining movie again the only few flaws I have is not all the humor works there's a point where they keep coming back to the audience and what the audience thinks and what the audience says. So you get like these random people. I didn't care for that. This happened in other films uh, to more a uh, successful nature. Like the Truman Show. The Truman Show, it would come back to random audience members reacting to what's going on. And I was fine with that. Because I thought that worked into the story of you know, these people cheering on Truman to do the right thing. Even one guy, hey, let me go read a book. Here, I just didn't, when it cut away to these little bits, I didn't find them interesting. I didn't find them funny. I think as you just cut them out, it would not have mattered a bit. So I, I didn't do, all these members it cuts to, there's really nothing to them. It's like one guy in a bathhouse and one guy in a chair eating. And there's really nothing to them and nothing really culminates with that stuff. So, other than they, they cheer too, but nothing else. I don't think that was needed. And again, there are times where I'm like, there's a cop that gets hurt. And he helps him. And he calls. Can he not clearly tell the cop now that he's two feet away and, you know, the guy's hurt, but Daniel Radcliffe is helping. Hey, look, look at my hands. You see my hands? Look how they're bolted. They did that to me. Even like, hey, get your phone out. Get your phone out. Show this. Okay? I don't want to get hurt, blah, blah, blah. But this is what happens. Could he just, like, tell the cop this and then wait there with the cop? Like, the top is so blind, he can't see that this is literally bolt into his hand. Whereas there's no way you could do that yourself. So, like I said, there's certain logical issues and humor. It, again, it's not a perfect film. But I did find it an enjoyable film. I think it was on the my list of, like, my favorite films of that year. Um, and I thought it was, it was creative. Never seen a setup like that before. Fast energy. Entertaining. Uh, yeah, I like the lead. I like the references. They didn't make me groan or cringe like other movies do. Fuck, there's a reference to He-Man that's way better than the entire new He-Man cartoon. Samara Weaving 
gets beaten up by a hammer and then gets it away, gets some cocaine with the hammer, like, I've got the power! It beats the shit out of the guy, including right into his fucking balls. That was a better reference to He-Man than Kevin Smith's He-Man cartoon. <laughs> and again, Samara Weaving plays crazed, just completely out of her fucking mind, assassin, but there's more to her. She has a little pass as to why she's doing it, and again, ultimately they team up. Yeah, a fun movie. I think it's a fun, entertaining film. I think if you like films a la Crank, Crank 2, in that video game, but reality, that energy vibe, frenzy, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I, I quite enjoyed it, and um, I think it's a little bit underrated. I don't think it was as bad as people made it out to be. That's just me. It's definitely got more creative juices than... A lot of films this year. But like I said, it's kind of was tailor made for a guy like like me. So uh, with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye bye.